Hi folks, Jonathan Whitaker here. Uh, if you've watched any of my videos, you know I kind of like to do a lot of things with offcuts. And I hate throwing things away, so one of the things I like to make are these little planters, one of the things I sell at craft fairs. Uh, this is just made from an offcut of a 4x4. Basically, this is what they are. A little trough. Hold out the middle with a Arbitec and various other things. Fill it with soil or perlite and boom, you've got a little planter. I like the uh, spider plants, these things, because they take very little maintenance. You don't have to water them for ages and they make their own little babies so you can make more. So what I'm going to use today is a chunk of this. Uh, I make quite a few of my sculptures out of this. This is a reclaimed uh, pine bedpost. It's 4x4. Four Nothing special about it, made of pine. Okay, there we have our basic shape. Ends might be a little bit rough, doesn't matter. It's all going to get sanded and uh, roughed up at the end. So I've marked out my center. Now I'm going to use uh, a few different tools to remove that, make sure I don't go through the bottom. So we have our little planter. Okay, the first tool I'm going to use is the Arbortech Mini Turbo Plane. Uh, these work really well. Uh, but there was a few things I didn't know about them before I started using it. And one of the things was they get very, very, very hot. As in, to the point where I wear, I always wear heavy-duty safety gloves. Half the reason I wear these is to handle this because it gets so hot it'll actually, it's melted my glove once before. And the only problem with that is once it gets so hot you can't really undo any of these. I don't know if you can see... Now there's an Allen key slot there. The first time it got hot, uh, that Allen key hole didn't work anymore, so I had to actually cut uh, uh, an edge into it so I could get a heavy duty screwdriver in there. As for the small blades, these blades have got little tiny star key nuts in there. I can only get one out, so the other one is just getting duller. Um, so hopefully it'll have a good life. In retrospect, considering this cost a hundred pounds, I'm not sure if I would buy it again or if I would just stick to something like the Sabre little donut uh, wheels. They work pretty much the same way, but they don't have that price tag. Okay, I've been using that now in pine for about five minutes. Now this is a very dry piece of wood, it's under 10% moisture content. That hole is roughly, up, turn it around. Five centimeters deep, and it's 13 centimeters wide. Well, I could, don't know if you could tell in that video how much this was smoking, and if you actually look at the tip, 
you can see uh, the heat distortion on it. Yeah, it's, if, if you see that, it's actually melting my glove. Let's see if it'll actually imprint on here. You yeah, see, it's actually branding the wood. It's so hot. So it's a. Uh, when you use one of these Arptime new turbo fans, make sure you wear uh, gloves or something heat resistant because if you touch that now, your hand will stick to it. Alright, so I've taken the, the, well, the one blade that I can change. It's taken off, it's been sharpened. If you look, there's not a lot of a residue or resin buildup on it at all. So yeah, I can't even touch it like that, it's too hot. Okay, if you don't have a uh, uh, turbo planer, that's fine. Use a hole saw. That works pretty well. Dig a little bit, knock it out, dig it again. This one isn't, this is just a cheap one because uh, it's got that lip so you can't go that deep. Yeah, they've got other ones that you can get which don't have that lip on the outside which means you can go deeper into the wood. So it basically, you cut in, reaches the bottom, stop, take it out, knock the piece out, go again. Okay, eye protection on, ear protection on. I'm going to use the hole cutter to start a new one while the turbo plane turns on. Okay, with the coal cutter, coal, coal cutter, coal cutter, made three holes, and I'm going to take a chisel and bang those out. Okay, there we have our comparison. That's with the hole cutter. That's with the turbo plane. Both of them took about five minutes. This, uh, um, but the the turbo plane one still has a bit of work to do. This one just needs a bit of cleaning up on the inside. I think the biggest difference is that's <laughs> still hot. <laughs> that's a hundred pounds. That's from the pound store. You noticed it's smoking. It's not actually meant for what meant for drywall. It still works so, and that only costs a pound. So you could buy a hundred of these for the cost of one of those. You get the same result pretty much. Alright, so I've used the angle grinder to really rough up the edge. You'll see why at the next step. This is what's going to give me my uh, rustic look on the outside. If you don't have an angle grinder or something like that, you don't need to. You can use a drill, you can use a hammer, uh, chisels. I'll use gouges here in a sec, just so you get a nice uh, uh, rough surface. Okay, so now we come to one of my favorite parts. Uh, I'll call this something Jonathan likes to burn stuff. Okay, regular plumber's torch. This is map gas. Um, still got a glove on. Uh, air filter's going. Oh, sorry. Air filter's going. Sure, you keep your hand away from the fire. Make sure you have something in case the fire starts to put it out. Good ventilation. And off we go. Now, what we want to do is 
this chart. Okay, so now we have moment of truth time. We've got two quite charred up little bits of uh, wood. You can see the wavy effect. This was with the um, wood cutting bit. This is a, a smoother look. This is with the uh, gouge. Now we need to clean this off and see how much I burn it. Just until the outside starts to char. One thing you don't want to do, you don't actually want it to catch on fire, you just want to char it. Now to get this off, you can use a couple things. Wire brush works well. Uh, wire wheel fits in a drill. You can get some of the uh, uh, nylocks. Um, these are uh, nylon wheels. So it's softer, gives a gentler curve. Or you can get some of these Abracus? Abracus? Abra, abracadabras. Anyhow, these are little flat wheels. These work really well. Or since I burn this quite a lot, I use a brush sander. Now, Makita make one of these, it's about 300 pounds. Katsu make one of these, it's about 40 pounds. Get it on eBay. Highly recommend it. Right, this is messy. Uh, you definitely want to wear a respiration gear for this. Uh, do it outside somewhere. Uh, okay, let's get dirty. Okay, that's all done. So this is the gouge one. See, it's a slightly uh, uh, less dramatic effect. But what the burning and the sanding does, you can see, is it burns all the summer growth, the softwood, leaves the winter growth, raises up that grain pattern. See the other one, slightly more aggressive texture. So I'm gonna color these so they should look pretty good. So we have hole saw. Yeah, it gives a slightly bigger, deeper hole. Arbitech, slightly more bath-shaped bowl. Uh, make the hole, this is a, a pound or two. This, this one is quite expensive. Um, so I guess it depends on, on what you think. So now I'm gonna color these, then I'm gonna seal them with a lacquer, and they should be nice and uh, waterproof. Now I wouldn't use uh, food-based plants in these because I'm going to color them and I'm going to use a lacquer but if you wanted to use orchids or like I do with the spider plants or cactus should be absolutely fine and they go really well at uh, the little craft fairs I do. Okay, while the other two dry, I'm just going to show you how I plant these out. Okay, so I've just filled these with some compost, got it nice and wet. A couple inches in there. And then spider plants. So I've just cut them straight off the vine. That's how they grow. They come with roots. Little hole, just pop it right in. These things don't mind being bunched up too much, so it's uh, you can put in a couple. 
Like I said, I do these quite often for uh, shows. Uh, they always go down well. Yeah, you get like 10, 15 pounds for a free plant. Bit of off-cut wood that you would uh, normally just throw away. Anyhow, I hope you liked that. I hope you found it uh, somewhat interesting. If you like it, like and subscribe. You get to see more of this kind of stuff. Um, thanks for watching. Okay, final products. Now they're all dry and lacquered. This was the gouge one. And painted, lacquered. Looks pretty good. This one I might have gone a bit crazy with the color, but it uh, I'm pretty happy with it. I'm sure somebody will be. Yeah, thanks for watching.